If you're watching this, you're probably undergoing a reverse split and you're just curious, what does this mean for me? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So yes, in today's video, we are talking about reverse split, otherwise known as a reverse stock split. But like I said, if you're watching this video, then you are probably going to be undergoing one. Maybe you're looking at a company that just did one or will be doing some sort of variation. But what is a reverse stock split? We're gonna take a look at it from two different perspectives, but before we even get started, the vast majority of the time, it is bearish. Now, certainly down in penny stock land, you know, you're gonna hear all about all these great reasons on why the company's doing it and this, that, and the other, but just reverse stock splits. Eh. Now a forward stock split, that's fantastic. And that's what usually happens on big board stocks where you know, price gets very high per share and the company wants to bring down the share price. So a forward stock split, but with a reverse stock split, as you're gonna see, uh, that's just because the, penny, or the stock gets so low, I mean, near penny land, that, that the company, we, know, we gotta bring up our share price somehow. And a reverse split is a way to do that. So for those of you that, maybe are about to experience one, maybe thinking about jumping into a company, let's talk about it. So we're first just gonna talk about it from more so the company perspective, the overall company, meaning you know their share structure and all that. So let's just say that a company, company has 1,000 shares available. Now I realize that this is just for math's sake. So there's 1,000 shares out there and they are at $15 per share. So, I mean, you could get into the market cap, but we're not gonna do that. It's just from the overall perspective, company has a thousand shares, they're trading for $15 each. Now let's say they announced that, you know, they're gonna do a reverse split of five to one. So what does that mean? How can you do the math? Well, this means that you're gonna, they're gonna reduce the number of shares out there. And by reducing the number of shares out there, that's actually gonna prop up and increase the share price. And we'll go through the math here so you can know how to kind of calculate on your, on your end, you know, what's gonna happen with your shares, you know, what are the prices gonna be, all that good stuff. So the easy way to do that is just, you're gonna take the number of shares that are out there. Again, this is from the company perspective. You're gonna take a thousand shares, right? And then you're gonna divide that by whatever the reverse split amount is, which is here, five. So 1,000 divided by five, equals 200 shares. So in other words, after the reverse split happens, instead of the company having 1,000 shares out there in total available, they're only gonna have 200 shares out there available. But that's not where it all ends because you gotta keep everything in proportion. So what do I mean by proportion? That's probably a good thing to, to go into real quick. But right now, the quote unquote market cap is gonna be 1,000 times 15, so that is 15, so 15,000 total. So just keep in mind the number 15,000. So now we're gonna go down here, 200 shares. So how do, you, how do we still get up to that $15,000 number though? Well, this is where, what's the new share price gonna be? Maybe you remember that, but back towards the beginning of the video, I said, you know, a reverse share is to increase share prices. So what you're gonna do is take whatever the price of share is, in our example, 15, and you're gonna multiply that, again, by the number there, five. So that equals $75 per share. So now you do the math here, and you know, do that again. So we have 200 shares times now $75 per share, and that's still gonna equal 15,000. So they're the same. Things have changed, shares have gone down, share prices have gone up, but at the end of the day, they're equal to one another. And I really kind of am trying to drive this home because this is where it comes into play from what you really care about, the shareholder perspective. So you as a shareholder, potential shareholder, whatever, you know what's going on from your end? So for this, again, keep in mind, you know, all this is still going on. For you, it still pertains to the, you know, the five to one. So that still is the number that you care about. And let's just say uh, that as a shareholder, you have 100 shares. And this is before the reverse split happens. So the re reverse split happens, let's do the math again. So you take the number of shares, in this case that you own, and you gotta divide it by the five, because that's the part of the reverse split. So that's gonna equal, equal 20. 
So you may be thinking, oh crap, I just, I only have 20 shares now? Well, let's quickly do the math on this. So if you have 100 shares and they're valued at $15 each, so your beginning number, so we'll calculate that is what? That number, $1,500, right? Because you have 100 shares times 15. So the total number that, you know, is kind of sitting in your account, what your shares are worth is 1,500. So you're thinking, man, I only got 20 shares. How, well remember, the share price is now gonna go up. So nothing different there, the share price is still 15, so you're gonna multiply that by five, and that still gives you $75 per share. So when you come over here and do the math, you're gonna see that your 20 shares, which you now have, times the new share price, which is $75, that is still gonna equal $1,500. So the big question that I always get in OIC is, you know, what's gonna to happen to my shares? You're gonna lose shares, but as far as the value of your shares are concerned, nothing changes because it's all proportionate. Now, the problem with that is, okay, well, the shares go down. So if the shares start going down again and again and again, the company can do this again. And then, then you're gonna lose more shares, but it's not gonna adjust properly. So if, theoretically, a company can reverse split you multiple times, multiple times, multiple times, and then all of a sudden you're gonna have like a half a share left but that's gonna take place over time. Now, another thing I get is, hey Clay, why are you doing a video chart analysis on this? They're doing a reverse split. It doesn't matter. Instead of you know, a chart pattern looking like this, let's just say, so here's a chart pattern, and instead of having $15 up here on the chart, after the reverse split, it's still gonna look the exact same. The only difference is instead of this being at $15, this is gonna be at $75. So from the charting perspective, nothing changes because it all adjusts proportionately. So you know, that's always one of the, my favorite things when a troll tries to, hey, idiot, they just did a reverse split. They're gonna be doing a reverse split. You can't do a chart on it anymore. Could you make it any more obvious that you just don't have any idea what you're talking about? So charting wise, nothing changes besides the prices. But as far as the pattern is concerned, that's gonna be the same. So that's what a reverse split is. That's kind of how the math works. Um, and so for you, nothing changes other than the amount of shares in your account will go down, but the share price will go up. But I mean, if you've seen companies that have a, a history of doing this over and over and over again, ma major red flag. Like I said, mostly you see reverse splits in the world of penny stocks. I suppose you could have them on some big board stocks too, but usually big board companies are doing forward splits. Uh, but that's what's going on. Uh, and it, despite what most people or, you know, what a penny stock management or, you know, the pumpers on message boards might say, reverse splits, they're not a good thing. Uh, you know, if a, if a stock gets that low where the company needs to artificially prop the stock back up, well, why isn't the stock being propped up by just good old company fundamentals, good old, you know, all that sort of stuff. Now you're going to hear excuses on this, that, and the other, why it needs to be the case, but just be very careful with it. But this is to answer what you're, why you're, I'm assuming you're watching this video, what a reverse split is and how it all breaks down. Any questions or whatever, leave those down below and I'll do my best to help you out. So hopefully you found this helpful and uh, you know, if, you're, uh, you know, if, if reverse split is on your mind at all.